What's going on, people? Yesterday, there was a very interesting Facebook comment. If you're working 80 to 100 hours per week, you're doing it wrong. I actually had a problem with that because this is a common, common thing. You, you will see many people talk about you should work smarter. You should um, be more engaged. You should be clever. Let me make sure that this is on. That you shouldn't really work hard. That That is just a big thing that is going on these days. And I'm going to tell you where it's wrong. I'm going to tell you how this is a problem for many, many people. Um, one of the things that happens or seems to consistently happen is people are not explaining the process correctly. There has been no less than four, five, six uh, Facebook guys, YouTube guys. There's been a few who's like, look, you, you don't have to work 80 to 100 hours a week. You don't have to do it. You can work less and you can make more money. Now, this is the part that gets confusing. It's true. At a certain point of your business journey, your salesman journey, whatever you're doing, you develop enough data points, skill sets, experience where you don't have to work that hard. However, everyone that has said that, when you look back into their history, they actually worked 80 to 100 hours. And I think what's happening is because now they don't no, no longer have to work 80 to 100 hours that they're now with this new fangled thing. I'm going to explain to you why everyone needs to work 80 to 100 hours for three to five years in their business. First of all, I don't care how smart you are. I don't even care how much money you have. If you go and get yourself involved in a business that you don't know a lot about, and once again, the business can change on you. Let's say you start a business and you know the, the field, you know everything about it, and then the government comes up with a rule change. You out of business. So part of running a business and working a business is going through these changes that seem to happen to a lot of people. All right, so you start this business, you have to learn how to make money with the business and you have to learn how to manage the business and you have to learn how to have continuing education so you continue your growth. Uh, going back to Brian Tracy, uh, one of the paths that he laid out, he talked about personal development. He talked about working hard and he never said stop working hard. He said, get into the personal development, begin to make yourself more valuable. And this is where we're going to go with some of the basic income or invest in yourself training if you're not making the money that you want to make right now it is because you're not valuable enough as a person and you're not creating enough value that you can monetize in the world that's it i mean you know i can go on and on and on but if you're not making the money like let's take a an instagram model if a girl is really successful, she can monetize her look, her fit, her image. That's value. There's someone that's saying, wow, you know, she has 1.5 million. We're going to put her here so we can divert some of her traffic into our coffers. She's made herself value. Let's say you're a YouTuber and you have 6 million subscribers. And every time you drop a video, you make 1.4, 1.5 million views per video. You've made yourself extremely valuable to yourself and other people. Let's say you start a chocolate chip cookie factory. Until you sell enough cookies, until you get enough, and really the deal is, is brand name recognition. That's how you can charge more money. But until you go through these changes, until you learn yourself, to use up the, the system, um, you're just not gonna make any more money. Now, why should someone work 80 to 100 hours? The first part of working 80 to 100 hours is, let's say you put in 100 hours this week. 
you more than likely have worked 20 to 30 hours. There's time going to the bathroom, there's lunch time, there's chit chat time, there's times you're sitting at your computer just looking off in the space, there's times you quote, are working, but you spend an hour surfing on Facebook. So you, you're not really, you, you're, you're putting in the FaceTime of 80 to 100 hours a week, but you're not really working 80 to 100 hours a week. And that's very key. Because one thing I will agree on, you have to track your time. Because if you track your time, then you can improve your activities. And years and years ago, someone said, if you were working as hard as you say you are, I would see more results. And it, it, it kind of hurt, kind of cut, but it was true. And I was like, okay. So I started getting rid of distractions. To this day, my phone does not ring. My phone has been set on silent and the notifications have been turned off for years because that whole little, oh, what's this? So let's say it's 30 seconds that you look at the text, you respond. Is it really 30 seconds? No, it's really anywhere from two to five minutes, depending upon what you're thinking about it and how much momentum you lose by answering that text. So once you start really putting in the time, you're going to reach a point where you're like, wait a minute, I am working so many hours. I'm not getting the results that I want. So at this point, it's going to urge you to start investing in activities that give you a greater yield. And this is why I think everyone needs to work 80 to 100 hours, three to five years in their business, because this is the thing. When you say that you need to work 80 to 100 hours, people go into lazy mental gymnastics. Oh, God, I got to work 80 to 100 hours the rest of my life. I bump that. Ah, I can't do that. Nah, no, 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 no. I can't. Uh, no, no. Miss me with that. What people are not taught. And once again, people on Facebook and the Internet use sloppy, imprecise and loose language. So when you put out there, you know, 80 to 100 hours, people like are immediately turned out. They're turned off. I'm like, well, who wants to work? 80 to 100 hours for 40, 50 years. That makes no sense. But part of the 80 to 100 hours is to rapidly improve your skill sets. Let's take football players, quarterbacks, running backs, wide receivers, um, defensive linemen. How many hours do you think they spend working on their craft for a three hour game? Thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of hours from the time that they were in Little League up until the time they get out of college. We're looking at someone who has spent 14 years working on their craft unpaid. Look at any top athlete, Steph Curry. He's got like, what, a one or two hour warm up before a game? Hours upon hours upon hours. Classic concert pianist. I used to date a pianist, and she used to play concerts. You know how often she practiced to play the piano? Eight to 10 hours per day. That's what it takes to play at that level. Now, you, she could have while most of us with one hour a day of practice, but to be the best of the best of the best of the world, she practiced to her fingers bled. Talk to anyone who's a high level, a musician. How often do these bands play these songs over and over hours and hours and hours? Because this is what it takes to learn your craft, to get it. And if you spend the 80 to hundred hours per week working it you're going to get better much faster i'm like look i know how it is i've been there i used to be that guy I didn't want to work was always looking for a hack i was thinking for to to work smart and then one day i just got to the point like i just got to do the hard work take the craigslist advertising system I was running a full-time business and then I added this other thing where I would spend two to three hours per night running ads, setting up ads, testing ads for three months on top of already what I was doing. Because I took it so seriously and because I invested a huge amount of time, that system served me 
for 12 years. So let's look at it. Three months of extreme maniacal hard work and 12 years of results. Or you could be like one of these people, don't work hard, work smart. And how many of these people, and this is one of the things that I, I often see, there are very few of these people who say that who are financially independent. It's very interesting how that happens. And then this guy, I went to his Facebook page and I audited him. He's older. Uh, he has a horse farm and some other stuff. And I started to kind of go into it. And I was like, there, there's more to the story. Because you have many people who will have what I call the financial benefit. Uh, maybe parents died, left them some money. I see some of that into his makeup because he's not a very sophisticated guy. And I don't say this to say he's dumb. He's not dumb. But there's just some stuff there that makes me go, you came into a gang of money somewhere. And this is why, you know, and it could have been a long time ago. Because you need money because money matters. So check out the video. Money definitely matters if you want to the scale, if you want to grow, you want to build something because you need to eat, you need to have a place to live. Money matters. And I, I've just looked at all of the times that I have invested a maniacal amount of time, energy, and effort and hours into something. And the, the benefit, the results after the investment were just all out of proportion to the time that I put in. Let's take my first book, uh, Making Money ADC with Self Storage Unit Auctions. It took me three months to write that book. I promoted it heavily for 11, 12 months, then about 14 months, took off. It got, to, so let's, let's look at it. Let's just say I worked really hard for 15 months. Working hard really 15 months gave me the privilege of early retirement at the age of 42 for almost three years. I mean, once again, I keep seeing this over and over and over again. You must work strategically hard, not just work hard. I mean, digging a ditch is working hard. Uh, picking up trash is working hard. None of this, these activities are going to make you rich or even financially solvent or may not even make you enough money to pay your bills. But working strategically in your business hard, it can change your life. It could change the life of your unborn great, great grandkids. And this is one of the things I constantly see that people are just like, you know, um, being shamed for working hard. And I'm going to give you a template. I'm going to give you some. Look at the number of immigrants who come here who put their heads down, who work hard. And within five to 10 years, they're making more money than Native Americans. They are living better lives. They have their communities intact and Asians work hard. And what you're starting to see is fourth and fifth generation Asians who are now acting like typical Americans and Indians like in my neighborhood, there's a ton of Indians. You think that they, they, they don't work hard. They just playing around. They work hard. Asians work hard. Uh, Latinos work hard. And when you start to emulate this behavior, because I have older videos, I have to go through them. But when you work like an immigrant, and you get rid of this entitlement and expectations, it's amazing what you can do in a decade. It's, it's awe-inspiring. But so many people are just trying to get away from working hard. Uh, someone that posted that there were so many jobs that were going undone because there was just people like, I'm not working for that little amount of money. I'm not going to work hard. No, no, I'm not working at all at that job, which is kind of crazy to me. So you have all of these things and all of these uh, tactics because there's a tactic and there's a strategy. Strategies typically outlive tactics. Like take YouTube. When I first started with YouTube, because YouTube was so different, I would get more views than I had subscribers. Because YouTube was just wide open. They wanted more people on the platform. There was no filter. There was no throttling of traffic. There was no uh, re redirect. It was just wide open. It was crazy. And to, the, and to this day, YouTube, Instagram, LinkedIn, you could still get a great deal of organic reach. If you just sat on Instagram 
and looked at how Insta not Instagram, but LinkedIn and worked on Inkerin and wrote a book about LinkedIn. Oh, wait a minute. Someone did that. Lewis Howes. That's all he did. That, that's what set him up for his seven figure business. Learning Instagram, working Instagram, learning how to do Instagram more effectively. Uh, he was laid up, injured, and he spent months working on Instagram. Hours and hours and hours per day. And here it is now. He's on cruise control. So let's from the top. You don't have to work 100 to 80 hours forever. But at some point, if you want your business to grow and take off and to accelerate your your growth pattern, you're going to have to do it, in my opinion. There are many people who disagree with me. And anyone that disagrees with me, I really want to look at their background. I really want to see how they grew their business because um, I'm a researcher. I'm going to look at your background. I'm going to look at your Facebook page. I'm going to look at how you live when you're making these claims. And if it doesn't match up, I'm going to call you a fraud. And there's a lot of frauds out here. Like people was like, hey, you know how you make $20,000 a month, but got a GoFundMe page up. And, it's, and the thing is, people do not investigate. I don't know what's that about where people just don't, unless you piss them off. Now you piss them off. Oh yeah, they're going to they gonna start digging. They're going to start searching. Um, this is why I've had so many haters because I had this one dude. He, was, he made the video and he had a discolored tooth. He had a roach crawling across his wall when he made the video about me. Talking about, you know, I make money and stuff. You, you got a roach, bro, crawling across your wall. Which means you're not living your best life. You ain't even close to your best life. But I digress. Working hard and strategically hard is the way to go because it also saves time. I want you to think about all of the time that you spend not trying to work hard. You may spend 60 to 80 hours researching a tactic to not work hard, where if you just work hard, you would spend less time and effort. <laughs> I see this all of the time. People will spend hours and hours and hours of research like, well, what about this? Or they'll buy every course or they'll buy every book. Simply, you know, one of the things I put on this channel, if you just do the Craigslist thing hard for a year, you're going to make 800 to maybe $20,000 in a year, not a month, just hauling off free stuff. Is it easy? No. Is it convenient? No. It's working hard. But if you don't have any money, please answer that question. Why are so many people who don't have any money absolutely refuse to work Anything they can work to put some money in their pocket. I, I, I've just seen this. It, it's crazy to me, but I've seen that many people will not do what they're qualified to do. Won't do it even if they're broke, even if they have warrants, even if they have bills to pay. Even They just simply won't do it. So there's some things. Let me get in here. What's up, Frozen? What's up, Raquel, Victoria Jackson, the blinding Buddha. That's interesting. Name E-Man Think, top of the morning. What's up, Black Caesar? Chris Monroe, what's up? Ye I don't know about that traffic. I don't get in it. But yeah, I've heard it's, awesome. it's terrible. What's up, Be Real, Edward Banks, Tim A. I know a number of broke, clever people. So do I. I see them on my Facebook page every day. What's up? What's up, Crep Junkie TV, Rock and Roll Diva, Engineer Life Skills, Quentin Jackson, what's going on? Rugged Collars. It's very, very important as a career not to get distracted and break your line of concentration as much as possible. This is something that I got from writing. Whenever I just cleared two to three hours, and really I was only good for two hours, I would write 1,500, 3,000 words, but there was no tv on there was no radio on maybe i'll play some classical music but when you get in that zone you can really produce a lot but a lot of people can't get in the zone because they're so programmed for distractions what's up randall riley uh let's see what's the difference between the art of holding and hustler kung fu university the art of holding is for business people. Uh, I made a mistake 
I was giving people stuff that they weren't really able to use because they didn't have a source of income. The Hustler University is, or the H undergrad is pretty much the groundwork that you need to do to get into a hustle mode. It gives you a lot of ideals and concepts and strategies on how you can start micro businesses, side hustles, because that's the first step. If you're going to become a business person, you've got to go through a grooming process of working really hard and managing your money because the, the two concepts make more money, manage your money very well. So essentially you're creating an accelerated income model. Hopefully it answers you. Uh, uh, Dumas Bacchus. I will have to check on that really quick because I have been focused on the money income product. Cause what's going to happen in probably investing yourself, we're going to get into some of these things, meaning that like, I'll give you a little tip. There's the five year LLC plan where let's say you don't know what kind of business you want to start but you need to start your LLC. Let me see, hold on a second. Let me get in here and see what I got going on. Cause it's, I haven't looked because let's go here. Let's see what we have. And yes. Okay. So that's still in play. Uh, the, the name is. Yes, it includes a consultation. Roadside Warriors, once you bottle your skill set, nobody can take that from you, but it takes practice, like you said. Oh, yeah, it takes a lot of practice because I'm out of the practice of writing. I can still write, but not like I was. And that's something new that's coming because I'm thinking of some concepts for some books to come out this year. What's up, Johnny Walden? Butte Ween. Melinda, what's up? Uh, Joseph Lajana, what do you think about retail arbitrage using Amazon FPA? One of the things that will happen, and this comes into the hard work. There are many people think that Amazon FBA is a set it and forget it. You find a few products, you throw them on Amazon, you make money. It does not work like that anymore. There's too much competition. So if you're willing to spend six hours a day on research, yeah, that can work. What's up, Just Smell? Green Machine? Agent J. Pool, I've... Um, all right, you don't tell me. it. it I thought it wouldn't jump in this. I've seen a lot of 6 a.m. to 1 a.m.s here lately. It's definitely a part of the process. Because what you're doing is complicated, Agent J. Pool, and you understand that. I want you to really think about what you do when you start a business. You go from being a regular consumer in the United States of America to becoming a producer. So you've got your how you were raised, you got that baggage. This is why Asian people, Jewish people who were raised to be producers, they don't they don't have that baggage. This is just like, oh, this is what Uncle Aimi said do, so I'm gonna do it. Whereas if you're not in that client in that in that vein, you don't have entrepreneurs in the family you got this thing of figuring some stuff out. And once you hit it, let's say you make $30,000 a month while your friends are working, you know, 160 hours and you, you worked a hundred hours and you made $30,000 a month. You're kind of feeling some kind of way because what you're going to see is unless you align yourself with a lot of other entrepreneurs, you're going to have a different life than most of your friends. And it becomes very tricky to navigate. But the uh, complicated part is you are reformatting yourself as a human being. And that's why this journey is so harsh and it's time consuming because people are not telling you, you the process and the strategy. They'll show you the end result, which is like, yeah, I got a nice house. I got a nice Ferrari. I got big booty Betty. But the, the stuff in the middle, the important stuff, they, they, ain't, they ain't talking about that because it was ugly. They didn't want to talk about that. the heck oh 
Yeah, man, that that was funny. See, Chris Moreau, the roach living bed, and he is. <laughs> uh, Butte Wing, copywriting sounds good. Is it still effective? Uh, once again, if you're willing to work hard, everything still works. Like, I, I would not want to do it. eBay still works if you're willing to work hard. Amazon FBA still works if you're willing to work hard. Kindle self-publishing still works if you're willing to work hard. Everything still works, but are you willing to work the thing? And that's where most people run into problems. Uh, superposition SEO. No, that's that money, income, and profit. It's one of the free modules. Just go over there and uh, poke around. Grand Rising. East uh, Simo. Eastern work habits, Western mindset seems correct. Um, I have to think about that because. The Eastern mindset is a little different and they're actually struggling over there because they have this almost like the Borg type thing, this Borg mentality that isn't really effective for creativity. What's up, Victoria Jackson, Kareem? What's up, Ricardo? Yeah, I'm working on some new stuff here. Be real. They have more pride than common sense. I, I got to say, I feel you there. Uh, Josco 31, they think they're too good for it and they have the nerve to look down on those who do, even if they got way more than them. Mm. Mm. Brother Man Trucking, greetings. Gee, just like in the trucking business, most people just want that check. Name, email, my work habits have been ongoing since uh, my youth. Just realized I was putting those hours into other dreams. What's up, Pra? All right, he just jumped. Hold on, let me go back. Let me go back. It's very true. What's up, Crep Junkie? Trying to get my time management skills on point at the moment. I can work for 16 hours a day, no problem. It's separating and applying equal time in each aspect of my business. That's hard. Uh, quick lesson. Get rid of everything that don't make money. Whatever that you can farm out to someone else that doesn't make money, do that and then put all your time into money-making skills. Uh, someone that posted, I forget who it was, that people don't want to sell. I sell every day. And I can look at my income. Like if I just like to take, say I stop selling every day for a month or two. Three months down the road, that will reflect in my income. So you, you got to be consistent with it. Sure thing, Dynamis. Uh, <laughs> DL, what's the best business entity for someone on child support? Order to protect your money. That's a whole different, that's a whole ball of wax right there. That's not, that's not something I can break down to you real quick. Uh... I will actually talk about that later because I was because one of the things I'm doing with money, income and profit is I'm doing a lot of research and I am finding out that ideals and concepts that are native to me are very atypical of other people. Because once again, I will go on record and say that most financial advice is designed to keep people poor. It's designed to keep you poor, to keep you average. And I, I'm not doing that. Josh Allen, if you're willing to work hard, it still works. I will give you a clue. You ever notice that a lot of the really successful drop shippers are not in the United States? They're in Australia, Indonesia, and you want to know why? Because they have a direct, they can hop on the plane or get on the moped and go talk to their, their manufacturer. They're really getting rock bottom prices because they're near where the stuff is being made. Whereas you here in America, you got to trust Alibaba and all this other stuff because I, I watched this video and it was funny. I don't know how it popped up in my timeline, but this guy was like talking about a product that since he was there in Indonesia, that he can get it for $2.50 less than what he could get it, buy it for here in America. And the product was selling for $20. 
those margins, uh, that two, that's a, it doesn't sound like a lot, but when you start factoring that across thousands and thousands of sales, that's a lot of money. What do you mean, Ben? Copy. Uh, I don't understand. Start market bill. Good day. Should you... Uh, should one become, should one be underemployed or starting a business of both? First of all, if I think I understand your question correctly, if you have a job, keep it and create a side hustle on and increase your income. I'm, I'm thinking about your question. There's a few quadrants here. There's job income. There's side hustle income and there's business income. I think you need to do the side hustle income first before you get into business income. All right. Let's go back. Name Eman Think first. What's your take on business that caters to the climate? I don't know anything about that. I know nothing about that. Uh, Johnny Walton, I'm a commercial driver with affiliate program with Amazon. Be good call the Walmart. It could be, but once again, the Amazon affiliate program, you need to sell a lot to make a check. I mean, a lot. Engineer life skills. I love this. I worked eight hours at the job when I worked another eight in my business. 16, 17, 18 hours a day. Did that for three years. Now all my friends say I'm lucky. They don't want to face uh, the truth, engineer life skills, and congratulations, because you, you, you broke the code. This is what you got to do. And this is what someone had mentioned that it's called getting escape velocity. You're not going to get escape of velocity working average hours. It's just not going to happen. So once again, congratulations. And, um, you know, it's hard to replace old friends, but get yourself some new friends as well, because people get very, very interesting when you, they find out that you're making like substantially more money than they are. And they look at you and it's like, well, you ain't smarter than me. How you making that money, bruh? You should. Mm. So once again, engineering life skills, congratulations. Agent J. Pool, true. Friends want it easy. I'm down for the reformat. Average life don't suit me. No, man. And you, you want to understand when I started this, I didn't even have an average life. I was so below average in terms of upbringing, in terms of money coming to the family. You know, when I say we didn't have indoor plumbing, I'm not joking. Cash Mac, how do you do research? You start off with a topic in mind first. That's the first step. What do you want to research? And then you go from there. Uh, Douglas Jones, if you were a first time author with no following, what you do Kindle today? Absolutely. Because when I was a first time author, you know how many subscribers I had when I dropped my book? 450, I believe. Yeah. So, <laughs> but once again, YouTube, like I would drop a video. I had 450 subscribers, but a video would get to a thousand views because there was just less competition. Absolutely. E-man, uh, place the account in business name and not yours. That That's part of it. But see, once again, this is where you, you got to be. Depends on who you're dealing with. Um, that's a big key part of this because, to be honest, most chicks, if you are on your job as far as being a father with the kid, most 
well, I will say, yeah, many. I will say many. I wouldn't say most. I will say many. But you got a crazy situation. Woo. You got to take some steps because this is what one idiot did. Went to court. He had his child support crazy low. Then he's on his Facebook page. He's posting on LinkedIn. He's Instagram, all this money. So the woman, the mother of his child, takes screenshots of this stuff to court and they jack up his income based upon that. So once again, know who you're dealing with. Thank you, C. Uh, Leon Nidus, the thoughts on having a significant other while pursuing the business. If her mental aligns with your mental, I don't see no problem with it at all. But if she's what I call a, a battery chick, and the battery chick is you the battery and she's going to drain you, get rid of her. She will keep you from succeeding. She will keep you from getting to the next level. She will impede your process. Let's see, where do we go? <laughs> oh. Okay, okay. Uh, supposition SEO is so true about how about it no really understands or appreciate what it means to start a business from scratch. Dude, basically ask me why I'm not $1 million in business in the year old. <laughs> That's an unsophisticated person. Uh, like, and uh, they was talking about in this group, how 250 K was middle income. And I just went ahead and showed the stats. It was like 250 K a year is exceptional income. And only 2% of the country makes that or more 2%. Uh, all right, DL's talking to brother man. Uh, copywriting is learning how to arrange words to get people to buy. It's just like any other thing. It's a skill set that you need to groom, and it takes practice. Butwing, what if working hard burns you out? You're not strategically working hard. And I'll give you an example. I have a new workout program. Like today, the goal is to work seven day, work out seven days a week. But working out seven days a week, I can't go hard every day. I have to be periodic. So like today is going to be a very easy. It's going to be like child's play. But it has to be in there because I can't go hard every day. So if you're working hard and killing it and going to the max and maxing out one rep singles, yeah, you're going to burn out. So you got to have the ebb and flow to your working. The Vibe on Tenant, how do you drive traffic to an inspirational blog so you can start to build an email list? Uh, my opinions don't start a blog. YouTube channel, podcast, Facebook group, Instagram page. Uh, there will be someone who will start a blog and it'll be fantastically um successful but blogs are very very hard i know yeah because this is what happened to me i got escape velocity when i got out the boarding house went from rent a crate panel systems to business environment and i got that that was my escape velocity working with jda that that money was what was a leap year that's what got me from the average and until you get enough money and it's going to be when the money's coming in so fast you can't spend it and for, once again for average people i'm not talking about people with crackhead habits it's just hard to spend a hundred thousand dollars a year net for average person you know if you somebody crazy yeah you can go through that real quick Rudy Lund, congratulations on your first thousand dollars this week. Pretty much Agent J Pool, and a lot of people don't understand that and they get mad when you bring that up. Thank you, brother man. Uh Dumas Bacchus. Once again, we talked about this. 
side hustle money in the beginning should be off the books, money that you're not paying taxes on, because what are the three greatest expenses you have? Taxes, your mortgage, and your car. So you, you really want to mitigate that while you get your game up. Deal, I fell off all my friends abandoned me. I asked two to borrow money. One made fun of me when I asked him for 60 to pay my phone bill when I was traveling to get a new job. Four months later, I had 5000 Man, it's that work. Mo Grizzly, what's up? Let's see. Let's go back. Barfield, uh, that's way too involved for live stream. Uh, you need to get in. Just wait around. I I'll be talking about that in a few weeks or a few months. Uh, say they were talking. They were saying, "Don't talk about the money." Like I was bragging. If your friends don't talk about money, you need some new friends. Seriously. What's up, Victoria? <coughs> uh, health before wealth. Yes, mobile detailing is still viable. Everything still works. It's just how hard do you want to work it? What's up, Diana? Uh, Denise, which program are you talking about? Go Gen B Fit. Thanks for the five dollars. Actually, there's going to be a digital channel. I finally come up with that, but once again, I got many projects that I have to do before I get to that. But yes, that's something that's coming. It won't be on this channel. Uh, super superposition SEO. No, I'm not going on any one show. I'm in the fourth transformation of this channel. Typically, when you go on a show or you someone else's thing, you want to have your thing well suited and set up, and and my stuff ain't. Stay woke. I have a 680 credit score. Uh, stay woke. Get some more money. Trust me on that. Josh Allen, I got a side hustle in the audio engineer working on a studio when I leave my day job. Trying to find more side hustles because artists are cheap. <laughs> Man, um, if you can make beats, that's a good one. And, you know, you're not going to get crazy money, but you, you get goods. You can make some consistent money. Arthur Robson, chief in Indians to producers and consumers to engineer machines. Thank you, THR33M. All right, Engineer Life School. Yeah, a lot of people leaving California. All right. So I just wanted to get in your heads about hard work. Hard work is an important part of your success. And I want to be really clear. You don't have to work 180 hours for the rest of your life. Two, three to five years strategic. Once again, strategic hard work, just like going to work, you know, working 16 hours a day, sitting at your desk. No, I'm not talking about that nonsense. I am talking about um, like. In the, the comment, I said, I work about 30 hours a week. I do. But there's a lot of other time that goes into thinking. See, I don't consider my thinking and planning time work because it's fun. I mean, it could border 60 hours a week, but I'm not tied to a desk. I, it, hap it just happens. It happens when I'm driving. It happens when I'm taking a shower. It happens when I'm working out. So this is not something that is a consistent part of what I do. Whereas the actual work work, producing videos, editing videos, courses, creating courses, promoting courses, emails, that's those are money making activities. And that's what I put into the 30 hours. And I don't include the other stuff. Oh, 
Oh, Adonis, you got to run the numbers. And a lot of people are afraid to look because this is how I know how many hours I actually work because I, I, I chart it. I was like, okay, I did this video. I did this stuff. I worked six hours today. I don't include, you know, um, working out. You know, I don't include thinking. I don't include talking to people. That ain't work. Uh, no, I'm not going to do that. Uh, there's some more channels that are coming and there will, there will not be that. Name it. Change or rearrange your gang before it gets too strange. If you don't discuss money. Dang. Change. Oh, uh, hold on. Change or rearrange your gang before it gets strange. That is crazy. I like that, though. I like that. All right. So what's going to happen this weekend is we're going to finish up the basic financial course. And Monday, we're going to start with higher investing yourself. And that's going to be very, really, really different. So it ain't there below. It's not there now. But after the stream renders, it'll be two links or two comments. It'll be a link to the basic financial education course. And it will be a link to some of the other stuff that some people mentioned. So with that, I will see you guys later. I got to go work out. Trying to get trying to get skinny swole. Is that what it is? Anyway, see you guys in the next video.